I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He that believes on me, though he will dead, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Almighty and everlasting God, Lord of life and death, we acknowledge you in all our ways and in all the events that befall us. In sorrow of heart, yet in quietness and confidence, we have gathered for these last rites. Lift us above the shadow of mortality into the light of your countenance and the comfort of your presence. Raise our thoughts from this changeful life to the calm eternity where you dwell and to those things which know no change. Save from glory to glory. Amid the passing of visible things, draw near to us, O thou invisible comforter, and speak to us your word of peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. amen. And amen. We are gathered here this evening for the going home ceremony of Octavia Aberdeen. I want to invite Pastor Frederick Weston, the President of the Baptist Union of Trinidad, to be able to come now and open us in a word of prayer. Good afternoon to all of us, and let me again thank you, Father Reverend Pascal, for such a warm welcome. On behalf of the Baptist Union of Trinidad and Tobago, of which I'm president, I want to extend my deepest condolences to the family. To Reverend Akala Abedin, who is one of the vice president of the Baptist Union, and of course to the rest of the family, as you go through this period of adjustment, remember that God is able. God is able to keep you. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10, Fear thou not, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with the right hand, the right hand of my righteousness. Sister Octavia was a person well prepared to meet a Savior well positioned and therefore she pursued God with a passion. As we pray today, God is able to give to us comfort. Father and God, we give you thanks even now for your love, your mercies. Your word declared with God that weeping will endure the night, but joy comes in the morning. So we declare great God with authority that this is the day you have made, we will rejoice. We rejoice, great God, because we have life. We rejoice, great God, Father, because you are strengthening us, O oh God, for a time like this. Father God, we confirm your word in our hearts. Even though we go through the valley and the shadow of death, we fear nothing, for thou art with us. So we thank you today, great God, for Father God, the one you have called from works unto reward. Father God, a well, a life of God that was well lived. A person of God that was well loved. And Father God, you choose at this time to call her. And Father, we thank you even now for your faithfulness. For faithful of God is you that called us, who also will do it. And Father God, you have brought a great God to this time. And Father God, we pray for now, great God. As we, great God, Father, recognize of God to be outside from us is to be present with you. So we thank you, great God, for the time, great God, we, Father God, would have shared with her. Even now, great God, you comfort us. You promise, oh God, to comfort every broken heart. You promise, great God, to sustain us. Even, oh God, in times of weakness, we know, great God, that you are able, oh God, to make us strong. Hallelujah. And Father, we depend upon you because, of oh God, of that relationship. So now, dear God, saturate us. Saturate, oh God, your servants. There will be days, great God, when, Father, the will of God resolved. And, Father, God, she will not be, they will not be able to that far. I pray for God when those days great God comes. 
you, Father God, will comfort her. Restore, great God, your word. Restore, great God, your mercies. And even, oh God, your compassion. The Father God, the days ahead, great God, they will know, great God, for true. Be still and know that you are God. You are still a rock in the weary land and a shelter in the time of storm. So reign now with your peace. Reign with your joy. Reign, O oh God, with your mercies. Condescend and consume right now every broken heart, every sorrow, every true peace for death. And Father, let us, O oh God, be alive in you. So as we worship, we as we worship, great God, we celebrate a life that was well lived. More than that, great God, we celebrate you, the ultimate one. So we thank you even now for answer prayer. And we thank you, oh God, for your continued blessings. For your name and mercy sake. Amen and amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Thank you. I want to invite those of you who are privileged to be on the inside. If you would stand with us, those who are on the outside, if you are sitting, stand with us. As we sing the hymn, blessed assurance, in Jesus is mine.
I want to invite the worship team if they will come down as we as we engage in, in worshiping the Almighty God.
bags of fat. You can have a seat. Bags of fat. Undisputable fat. That's me. It's God. Yes, God. I want to invite Mr. Colin Abdi to come now and eulogize his mother.
those days and as toxic about his ties and so on. The only thing though, that man had five children. And she beat him. From a previous marriage. But she met him and fell hell, head over heels in love with him. And he more than likely fell head over heels in love with her. And they went on to marry. Having married into a family that has five children already, she went on to make five more. Those things don't happen much these days, but that's what it was in 1950, 1960. So ten children in the home, and she had to take care of these ten children, and sustain a family, and sustain a marriage, and they of course Back then, as I continue, you're going to see, her husband's job was to go in the forest and cut down logs, pull them out and sell to the sawmill, and that was the financial basis of the husband at that time. So you understand that there will be some difficulty in that family. But she managed through that whole scenario. She maintained her home, bringing up those 10 children, particularly this last one we're speaking here, in a way where she was able to manage our sense of values, our sense of principles, our sense of dignity, was able to send each of us of the last five to secondary school. I have no idea how that happened or how that was taking place, but managed to send us to secondary school with food every day, with clothes on our backs, and was able to sustain a life that saw these five children of the, of the last from the second marriage, become quite successful. Each one is, two is a pastor, two is pastor's wife, and one is holding the mic speaking to you. She was a dedicated woman. She was a no-nonsense woman. Many of you who have met her would tell her, if would know that if she found that your lifestyle was a little off, she would tell you without hesitating. Not really with an intention to condemn you or to judge you, but with an intention to seek your soul. But she was very, very concerned about, you see where she is now? She wants everyone to be there. So she would charge you very carefully. Don't tell children, because children made a lot of mistakes and did a lot of nonsense as well. She would charge down to her children, down to the last one. I'm the only one who didn't make me sick. I was a perfect one. But she would charge all of us, including myself, to walk straight. And with that charge came not only instructions, but came a modeling. Because she herself would walk straight and demonstrate what it is to walk straight. So we would um, have no choice, really. But thirdly, added to that, apart from the charge and the modeling, if you did not walk straight back then, well, everybody knows what to follow. Modeling. When the modeling failed and instructions failed, there was something called the person that she would have employed and used very skillfully to produce 10 beautiful children. She's no longer with us though, today, but we celebrate her existence. She's a friend of many, she's a grand uh, mother of many. Many of the people in the community, particularly in her own little space where she used to sit there, would come and they would get advice, they would get counseling, they would get directions, whether it has to do with finances, marriages, relationships. She was an expert in all the field, and she would counsel and direct, and trust me, they would respect and be respond to her counseling very, very, very uh, meaningfully. So today we celebrate all of those things in Granny and in Sister Octavia, or Miss Oki, however you want to call her. We celebrate all these things with a sense of uh, uh, nostalgia, but it is with a sense of great joy that we can look back and see that this lady came, spent 80 years with us, and left a legacy that none of us here could deny or could say was a worthless life, or a useless life or like that even contribute positively. I'm sure right now, she is celebrating us as well with us. 
There will be no one left though, this side of the eternity, pushing on the current when we go in the beach. She also will be absent though. We will also miss that mango tree management that she used to take care of every year, mango season time. To ensure that all the mangoes were equally distributed after she got her share, of course. To make sure that all the mangoes were equally distributed and that nobody got more than their share. She would sit in that gallery and manage every picker and every person. That would be missed. That would be something that would uh, mind with. One, two years. Okay, I've got a little bit of song here. Yes, I'm saying that will be missed, but we will, of course, live with those memories. We'll every year cherish those memories, and we will, of course, anticipate that when we meet her again on the other side, that she would be, of course, sharing us on where she is right now. We know for sure, like she said to several of us, she had no hesitation in passing on. She had no frustration and no, 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 no torment in passing on. She joyfully anticipated moving on to the other life. And while we are sad, we may be a little, uh, we will be a little uh, sad and, and, and at the moment will be disturbing. But we know for sure that we are going to meet her again and that she's cheering us on even right now as we continue to celebrate her life. My encouragement, therefore, is for us to continue to celebrate those aspects, those areas of her life that prove to be very, very meaningful and will bring the joy to her when she looks down or looks up or whether she's, well, she's on the side or the front, wherever she is, when she's looking, she's able to see that the instructions and directions that I came on this 80 years, planet and left, are being followed by those who I live with. I thank you and I turn over to the pastor. Thank you very much, Colin. You, everything you said was so convincing. Everything you said was so convincing. It, it is difficult to question anything you said. But for the part that you said, you're the only one in the way looking for. I mean, the last of my mother's children would know how to treat with that stuff. Thank you very much for sharing with us the memories of a life well lived. Colin spoke about his four other siblings. One of them goes by the title, Johanna. She's going to come now. Her name is Johanna Maxman, and she's going to come now and deliver a special song for us. Thank you, Pastor. You know, last night we were sitting, talking, um, with my brothers and they from, everybody was on Zoom just talking with each other, and um, somebody asked, what was one of mommy's special songs? And it's only this morning I remember one of them, and I, I think I want to do that at this time. Each step I take, my Savior goes before me. And with his loving arms, he leads the way. And with each breath, I whisper, I adore thee. Oh, what joy.
We thank you, God, for this opportunity to be here to celebrate the life of your servant. We've come to the place now for your word. Father God, your word describes your Holy Spirit as the comforter. It is he who comforts. I ask in the name of Jesus that God, as your word goes forth, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you will comfort the hearts of the bereaved family. Anybody who has been affected by this death, that you will comfort them. Father God, this is your word. We are your people. I cannot minister to your people. It is you who does that. I pray in the name of Jesus this evening that you will use me as your instrument. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And amen. Chapter 13 of John's Gospel records for us that Jesus guarded the disciples together in the upper room for the Passover meal. While then, he demonstrated to them servant ministry by washing their feet. That is recorded in verses 1 to 20 of chapter 3 of John's Gospel. While there, he foretold his betrayal, then sent Judas away to do his treachery. That is recorded in verses 21 to 30 of John's Gospel, chapter 13. He also spoke of his death in verses 21 to 33. He commanded the disciples to love one another in verses 34 and 35. And he foretold Peter's denial of him in verses 36 to 38. All this happened one night. And because it happened on that one night, it caused an air of uncertainty among the disciples. Remember, this was the man. They left their livelihood to follow this Jesus. And now, they are being told all of this. Enter chapter 14 of John's Gospel. And it is amidst this background of chapter 13, Jesus in chapter 14 attempts to give his disciples some hope to counter the darkness of the situation. On a night when hope seemed not possible. In chapter 14, Jesus speaking to his disciples to give them hope. This evening, all of you gathered here, especially the family and friends of Sister Abedin, and I'm told that she was lovingly called mommy by everybody. All of you gathered here this evening, the reality of mommy's death is just sinking in. You are now becoming aware that after today, her physical presence will no longer be with you. You are now becoming aware, like Colin said, that she won't be there anymore to administer administration of how many mangoes each person got. You are now becoming aware that the seat that she occupied in this house, she won't be there to occupy it anymore. In the darkness of this situation, I present you with the words that Jesus gave to his disciples in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. And these are the words. He began by saying to them, and I say to you today, don't let your heart be troubled. Be calm, he says. Be calm? That seems something strange to say. The disciples had much to be troubled about. They were just told that Jesus will be betrayed and he will die. He just this 
dismiss Judas to carry out his act of betrayal. Jesus just told him he was going to leave them. Jesus just told Peter, who was the informal leader of the disciples, that he will deny him three times. The disciples could sense danger lurking in the shadows, not only for Jesus, but for themselves as well. And here this man is saying, don't let your heart be troubled. The King James Version puts that, let not your heart be troubled. Because I am sure this evening that some of you, you are experiencing this uncertainty. No more mommy to call on. No more advice of wisdom to receive. The seat, like I said, that she used to sit in, it might be occupied, with, it might be occupied, but not by her, by somebody else. As people who have relied on her all your life, your question now is, how will I make it without her? How will I make it without her? Without her? Your hearts are troubled, yet, in this situation, Jesus is saying to you, as indeed he said to his troubled disciples there, let not your heart be troubled. Be calm. Be calm. There's a storm of life. But the person who is saying to be calm is the Lord of the storm. Be calm. Be calm. It's instructive to know that Jesus never told them, don't grieve. He never told them, but all right, don't worry. He says, be calm. There is this thought that is expressed at funeral services and people say, don't cry. I always say to people that is why we were given tear ducts to cry. You want to cry? Cry. There is nothing illegal about crying. Cry if you feel to cry. What the Bible encourages us is this do not weep as those without hope. So in your crying, remember that there is a hope. Jesus did not only tell his disciples, let not your heart be troubled. He also went on in verse 1 and he told them, believe in God, believe also in me. In other words, have faith. This, these two sentences, I should say, believe in God, believe also in me. Grammatically, these two sentences can either be taken in the indicative mode, which means it is that Jesus could be stating a fact, or they can be taken in the imperative mode, meaning that Jesus is given a command. Most theologians agree, however, that most likely Jesus intended it in the indicative mode. He was giving them a command to believe in God and believe also in me. Seems kind of strange that in the face of uncertainty, God is commanding his disciples to have faith. You see, the, the fact is this. Jesus acknowledged the fears of the disciples, but he still commanded them to have faith. Listen, in, in your grief, Jesus God in Jesus Christ is omniscient, means he knows all things. So he knows exactly how you feel right now. He knows the fears. He knows the uncertainty. But in spite of that, just as he did to his disciples then, he is doing to you, his disciples now, and he's commanding you to have faith. Have faith in him. Jesus, what in this situation is there? to have faith. You see, listen. Jesus is commanding you, just as he did his disciples, to have faith not because of the situation, but in spite of the 
situation. In spite of the situation, you see, the truth is this. The situation doesn't diminish who God is. He is still able to do what he says he will do. So in spite of the situation, sometimes we need to just lift our eyes off the situation and place it on God. Because a lot of times the situation seems big and overwhelming, but it's only in the face of our big God that we realize how small the problem is. He is saying to you, have faith. He is commanding you this evening. You are troubled. You are affected by the death of this saint. And he is commanding you, have faith. He is commanding you to be assured of the things you hope for. Be assured of the things you hope for. Listen, when, you, when she was alive, as her children, Colin, Colin said it in the eulogy. She didn't only tell you how to walk, she showed you how to walk. You see? And the word of God tells us in Psalms chapter 116, verse 15, it says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I know you are hoping that that word is true. That, listen, when this life, when this woman's life would come to an end, that she would be precious in the sight of God. Jesus is saying to you today, be assured that his word is true. Yes. Be assured. Not only to be assured that that is true, but know for certain that she is in heaven with me. That is what Jesus is saying. He, she is in heaven with him. Look at the word in Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. He says, be thou faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of life. Look, she was faithful to death. Be certain that she is in heaven with God now. Not only is she in heaven with God, but she is there with her crown and dancing and enjoying the presence of the King of Kings and of the Lord of Lords. Now what Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 tells us? Faith is the substance of things over, the evidence of things not seen. When you obey Jesus' command to have faith in God and to have faith in Him, your fears will lose their power. Your uncertainty will lose its power. Why? Because faith triumphs over fear. Yes, she's gone, but I know where she's gone. Jesus told his disciples, in my father's house, in verse 2 of chapter 14, in my father's house, the phrase in my father's house is more personal than the word heaven. When we are reading the scripture, we read and correctly Think of in my father's house as heaven, and that's correct. But why didn't Jesus say in heaven? He says in my father's house. Why? Because it's more personal. Yeah. You see, listen, somebody who has a loving relationship with their father, they enjoy privileges in their father's house that are denied to other people. Yeah. He wanted you to know that it's your father who owned the house. Jesus is at home in the Father's house and he promises that we will be at home with him also. He promised that Octavia Aberdeen will be at home with him also. So she has gone to her Father's house where she will enjoy privileges because of the relationship she had with him. Don't let your heart be troubled. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. The King James Version translates the Greek word mone as mansions. But we are told by translators that a better translation of that word is hope. So it would be better to say there are many homes in my 
my father's house are many homes. And this is why home is a better translation. Because of this. Monai is the noun form of a Greek, Greek verb menu. Now, this, this Greek verb menu is usually translated abide or abiding. Jesus uses it, uses menu throughout the scriptures, throughout the gospel, to describe close relationship. I and my father are one. The verb he uses there is menu to, to describe the kind of relationship he has with his father. And that is why biblical scholars believe that homes will be a better word there than mansions. Because homes also carry with it the thought of close relationship. You see, Jesus was, was giving us, the, or telling his disciples, as indeed he's telling you today, that look, in my father's house, there are many homes, home, a place for those who have a close relationship with him. You see, the point is that Monai has as much to do with relationship as it has to do with place. That is why it is said, home is the better word. You see, when you think of mansion, you think of a lavish place, as you would expect a mansion to be. But that is not the thought of the scripture. The point is not that the space will be lavish as you expect a mansion to be, but the, the, the point of the scripture is that there will be room for all. That's the point of the scripture, as you would expect in a house. Just imagine this. You don't matter how big a family is and how small a house is, there is always room in that house for any member of the family. And that's the essence of the scripture. In my father's house, there are many rooms, there are many homes. The point is, there is home for everyone who has a close relationship. Right. So in a real sense, she gone home. Right. There's a chorus we sing. She gone home, ring the bell. She gone home, ring the bell. She gone home. Ring the bell, ring those charming bells. She gone home. She gone home. Jesus ends verse 2 and verse 3 of John's Gospel, chapter 14. He says these words If it weren't so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be yours. Jesus, contrary to the thoughts of the disciples, he was not abandoning his disciples. No, no. You see, his impending separation from them was God's plan. He was going to prepare a place for them. I am, I am here to let you know. I am here to let, to, to let Sister Abedee, to let mommy's loved ones know that she is not abandoning you. No, her separation from you at this time is part of God's plan for her and for you. It's part of God's plan. That's the way he wrote it. That's the way he scripted it. It is difficult to see in times of uncertainty, in times of sorrow, in times of bereavement. One of the young ladies who were here just now, who was supposed to be here singing, she told me just now, listen, when she took the mic, I, I didn't sing it much because I know the words of him song. And, so I just hear the movies and eyes. I said, no, the words, the words are right here. She said, I, I don't see them. I can't read the way I feel. So the truth of the matter is, in this place that we are emotionally, in the river, or oh, sometimes it's, it's difficult to see. Sometimes you're not sure. It seems so kind of surreal. Is this really happening? 
I want to let you know something. There are people who would, would give you their experience of the death of their parents at a very early age. They had to come all through life without the love, experiencing the love of a mother or the wisdom of a mother. The truth is, those five of you, and I know your, 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 your other brother is looking on, those of you, all of you are adults now, have your own families. You have been privileged. You have been blessed by Almighty God to have had a mother who has lasted as long as she did with you. Right, Colin? <laughs> well, he, he, he doesn't have a problem. He, he, he was a perfect one. He never did anything. But it was, it was, it is, you are blessed. All I'm saying is probably today, probably now, because of the bereavement, because of what is happening, you might not see how blessed you are. But trust me, you are blessed. You are blessed. Jesus promised that he will come again because he has gone to prepare a place for us, because he has gone to prepare a home for us. He will come again and receive his disciples to be with him. But this is interpreted in many ways by theologians. And at least two of the ways it is interpreted is this. Either by death, meaning when we die, or by the end of the world. Jesus coming to take us to our home. As far as mommy is concerned, Jesus came for her. As far as she's concerned, he came for her and has received her to be with him. Yes, she will be missed. She has gone to the place that he has prepared for her. Yes, she will do this. There won't be another Octavia Adelie. There will be none like her. None will compare. There will be other people who will come and give good counsel and give good advice. And there might be somebody who, who is blessed to have the skill to manage the mango distribution. But there will never be another Octavia Adelie. This, her person, should stand out as a reminder to those of you who have been affected by her death, as indeed all of us, that Jesus has a place prepared for you too. He has a place prepared for you too. Not only does he have a place prepared for you, he expects that, like man, you will join him there. He expects that you will join him there. It is my prayer today that you won't disappoint. It is my prayer today that you won't disappoint. We do not like to face truth. Truth seems to be a word that is ostracized these days. Truth seems to be a word that is relative. It is true to you if you choose to accept it as true. But let me just say something this, this evening. Truth is true whether we accept it or not. And the truth is, as Octavia is today, one day we will be if Christ doesn't come before. But she was bright. The world's brightness in brightness is foolishness. It's foolishness. She was bright. Colin spoke about the days that she would go off to school barefooted, but she was bright. Bright enough to know that if she walked the way God would have her walk, that one day, hallelujah, one day, barefoot or not, she will be walking on gold. One day, she will be walking on, as a matter of fact, when you're walking on gold, you need no Nike. When you're walking on gold, you need no shoes, man. When you're walking on gold, you need I want to feel it under my foot, man. Because I know. Yes. 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 No. She was bright enough to know where she was going. 
She was bright enough to live her life, to forge a relationship with her King of Kings, yes. so that when the day comes, she goes home. Yes, sir. No more crying there. She's gone to meet her King. I want to encourage the bereaved family, friends and families, all of you who've been affected by her death. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be calm. Be calm. God is who he says. And he will do what he says. He will do. God bless you. There's a recession on him that is on the program. The him is, it is well with my soul. It says, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well. Those of us on the inside and on the others, well, once you have a program with you, can you stand? Can you stand?
person to kind of arrive a little late and you would like to view the body. So what we're going to do is, but as a matter of fact, what we're going to do is we are going to do our recession and we're going to take the, the body out, close the door like it was at the beginning. So those, and we're going to wait there and those who came late, you can come in there before we go to the cemetery. Okay? Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, the God that of the dead and of the living, we rejoice in all who have faithfully lived and peaceful death, whose benediction and beauty are even now in your heart. May we be assured that they who are sent to us are from the Lord and the faith.
I want to keep it live. I keep it live going. Oh, I, I don't know. want to break it. Have you saw it? Going? Internet to run that? Yeah, I'm on YouTube. I came alone and I left that here. I want to keep the light going. I want to be behind you. Alright. So, so see if you could do yeah, that. See if you could do that one. One time. Come fast. Why is she with those out? Sally fifteen, Chuck Show Quinn. Okay. What do you say? So then to be good. Mm -hmm.
ってる
funeral. Okay. Hi, Uncle John. Hola, we granny. Yeah, hola, we granny. Hello, William. My condolences to the family. Strength and grace, comfort and peace on God Almighty. Anybody wants to see the body still now? Anybody? Yes, yes, I'll call in. Yeah, let's do this quickly. Yeah. <laughs> this side. I have your lucky. the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for God, you are with me. Now in Christ, now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. In him we shall all be made alive. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we cannot take anything out of it. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All flesh is as grass. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. And all the glory of man as the flower of the the grass with us and the flower fails. But the word of the Lord endures forever. After labor comes rest. After struggle, peace. After life, fitful fever. This last sleep. For as much as it pleased Almighty God to call Octavia Aberdeen away from this life, the soul of our dear departed sister, therefore commit to the ground. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And leave her soul with God, his maker and savior, in short, certain hope of the resurrection to life immortal through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died and is risen again and is even at the right hand of God. Amen. O oh God, the Father Almighty, whose faithfulness never fails, comfort, we pray, 
the souls of all who mourn the loss of this our sister, your servant, that they may abide patiently in you and know that neither height nor death, nor things present, nor things to come, nor death, nor life, can separate your children from your love, which is in Christ Jesus, your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And amen.
Say anything before we close the live. Just to talk to the live. Just to you. Will I? Will I and Grace? Um, this is your brother speaking to you all back at home. Um, the circumstances we understand at this time is not the best one. And it's very much unfortunate that you all can't be here to share this moment with us. But we appreciate the time that we had with Mami together. And today we feel great sadness, but I know there's a sense of joy that she's gone to be with her family. And so you all keep blessed, stay strong, and have faith. We will keep in connection. Okay? Blessings. I close any live then. Huh? Yeah. Live.